Hello, I'm JW, and uh, this time we're having a quick repair on a piece of equipment, and the piece of equipment is this thing here. It's one of these hedge cutters, electric variety, and the problem, as you can see, it's someone has sliced through the lead using the actual blade itself, and uh, you'll notice that it's about as short as you could possibly get. That's about as far as it reaches, so it's not made a decent effort there. Now, the person who sliced it through shall remain nameless, but uh, nevertheless, uh, it's a fairly common problem with these devices. Here's the rest of the uh, power lead, and it's actually got one of these connectors in it already, because in the past, of course, this has obviously been sliced through before, so this was probably put in just to join the two ends together. Now, of course, we could continue doing that, but we'd obviously end up with about 50 of these connectors stuck along the length, so in this case, we're going to be replacing a fair part of this flex as well. Now, at the moment, uh, it's got a plug on the end, and it's one of these uh, moulded-on jobs, which we're going to have to throw away, because unfortunately, the length between this older connector here and the plug is basically all of that you see there. So if we just took this off and uh, connected it to what's left on the trimmer, we'd have basically a mains lead about five feet in length, which obviously is fairly useless. So we're going to have to basically dispose of this, put some new flex on here, connect this to the actual trimmer itself, and put a new plug on the end as well. Now this is the thing, it's just some cheapo thing from uh, Wilco, which is some uh, substandard shop in the UK. And you'll see here's the lead that's been cut, and really it has been cut as short as it possibly could be. If you pull that there, it just about fits into the blade where the chopping event occurred. Now we could unscrew all of this and put a new lead into the actual equipment itself, but the problem with these things is they're so cheaply made, they're not really designed to be opened. This thing has a considerable number of screws here, and it's basically the style that you take it apart, and then all the middle is just basically sitting in there and bits fall out and all of that. And uh, seeing as we've already got that connector anyhow, we might as well make use of it. Uh, there it is, so uh, what we'll do is just take this, put that on there, and of course put our new lead on the other end. Now, uh, plug here we need to get rid of first, which is one of these moulded on jobs, so we can't unfortunately reuse it, so we'll just cut off the actual wire there and we'll take the fuse out of it. Uh, see what fuse we've got in here. This, uh, this pulls out this little drawer here. So inside there we've got a 13 amp fuse. God knows why, because this is only a 450 watt uh, actual item. A 3 amp fuse would do quite perfectly well, so that'd be good for up to 700 odd watts. Now there may be a bit of a surge when this thing is switched on, but it's not going to be that kind of uh, huge amount, so uh, 450 watts uh, and a 3-amp fuse would seem perfectly fine. Now, of course, this plug has to be thrown away, and before we do that, we're going to make sure this can't ever be plugged in, because uh, although we've removed the fuse, plugging this in and leaving wires exposed is definitely not a safe deal. Notice this has got a metal pin, but it's only a two-core flex, which is somewhat uh, unusual. So before getting rid of this or any plug, just get hold of the pins and uh, basically just bend them. So there's no way that that's going to fit into any socket, so don't we just throw that away. You might think that's unnecessary, but there have been instances where people have gone into, say, somebody's house and uh, left a lead and a plug like that laying around, and some child has picked it up, plugged it in, and was killed. So uh, obviously we want to avoid that. Now, at uh, this end of the uh, lead here, we just need to strip away. That's why it was cut, but the set is pretty clean cut, so there's no other damage to the actual flex itself. So we'll just cut in there with the knife, and hopefully we just unpeel this. This is slightly unusual flex as it's actually red in colour. Now, garden tools usually have a fairly brightly coloured flex, so it can be easily seen when it's only in grass or whatever, but certainly red is a colour that we don't have, so the replacement bit we're going to use will actually be orange. So what we've done there, just score around the outside, not even enough to actually cut through because we don't want to damage the insulation, and then that will just basically pull away leaving a fairly clean end. This is the kind of cable that has sort of chalk or something inside so the outer doesn't stick to the inner. Now this thing here says it's already attached and uh, just to uh, make it easy, just cut away the existing flex from that. Of course we buy that uh, comes without uh, anything already attached to it. And then we've got our two bits of flex here which unfortunately are not going to be needed. This is only a two-pole connector, because of course it's only a two-core flex. You can also get these with a third pin in the middle for the earth if required, but to most uh, outside stuff, certainly for gardens, whatever, does have just the two pins. So a single screw here just uh, secures it in place, and then that part just pulls out. 
And again, the same deal with the other half. So again, single screw, and then that just pushes through and comes out like that. Now, when connecting these things together, it's absolutely essential that they go the right way round. And have a look on this piece here. See, it says connect to appliance, and that's the one with the actual pins in it. And then the other side here says uh, connect to mains, so in other words that's where your power would connect, and that's the side with the holes. And the reason for this is that when this is plugged in, you can't actually touch these. I mean, you can obviously shove something in there and uh, get a shock from it, but you can't actually touch that. If this was connected to the power side, every time it was unplugged you'd have these live pins exposed, which obviously would be very dangerous, so you do need to get these uh, on the right side. And if you look inside here, there's actually a groove in the sides there, and then it's got this sort of uh, sticking out uh, lug piece on both sides, so that will only fit into that one. The other side is just flat, and the other side of that, as you see, is flat inside, so you can't actually put the pin part into here because it simply doesn't fit. And obviously that's done so you can only get the two halves where they should go. So this is the part with the pins, which will go onto the appliance. Just removed a screw there from the flex grip so we can just pull the wires in and then just fold that over after the wires are in place. And this is actually marked with the correct colour, so uh, line and neutral or brown and blue. And of course it will just go in uh, like that. Now I've actually folded over the end of these because these are moderately large terminals and this is fairly thin wire. This is actually what's on the trimmer itself. And you could put those metal uh, frills on the end if you wanted, but it's not actually necessary, and so most people won't have those anyway. So that goes on this side, and uh, before installing we need to put this piece, of course, over the uh, flex that we have. So we'll just place that through there like that. And then just a question of putting the wires into the two terminals, and tightening those up on the back. And when they're in, you shouldn't be able to see any copper exposed here at the back, so it should be insulation fully up to, and in this case slightly within the black insulation plastic there. So just tighten up those screws on the back. These bits are fairly fragile because the top is only a clipped on thing, so to try and hold the thing together while tightening up. Of course it's more secure once it's in the other part of the housing. So those are the wires installed there, and then we'll just move our flex grip over the top and then just put the screw back through into there. And just press the wire through. So the idea is these parts here are not uh, actually having any strain put on them, and then the bar grips onto the outer flex only. And by grip I mean secure in place, so it's not actually going to move, but not so tight it's going to actually mash down and destroy the cable installation. So that should be uh, fine there, so it's pressing down on it, but it's not actually going to uh, move in and out. And we'll just check that our terminal screws are secure, which they are, so that's clipped together. And then that will just slide into the housing here. Again, it only goes one way because there's a hole there which matches up with a hole on the back for the screw that fixes it in place. So we'll just uh, push that down inside. And then we should see there the screw hole on the back, which we can fit the screw in to secure it in position. So that's the appliance end and the plug there. And of course the other end will be fitting to the new flex, which is this orange one we've got here. And it's going to be exactly the same deal, so uh, by magic it will be fixed in less than one second. So there it is all wired up uh, just the same as the other side. Now this flex is actually slightly larger, this is one square millimetre, and what came on the thing was only 0.75. You can see there's quite a difference in the thickness of the outer insulation. Larger is fine, uh, these uh, connectors actually go up to uh, one millimetre anyway, so it fits in there no problem. And of course they just uh, then plug together like that. And of course crucially when it's undone, the pins here on the appliance, and then this is connected to the mains, but of course you can't actually get a shock there unless you're going to literally shove a screwdriver or something down inside. And if you're stupid enough to do that, then you basically get what you deserve. 
So then we just need to fit a new plug onto the other end of the new flex we just put there. So as before, we'll just score that and cut in towards the end of this. Just uh, peel that back and then we'll just score around the outside. And then that will just break away like that. And say so don't cut too deeply, you don't want to actually cut right through just to literally score so you can just break away the outer insulation. So again, just the two wires there, a bit of damage at the end there, it doesn't matter because we're going to be trimming these off anyhow, so that's why we cut it a bit longer in the first place. So a plug here, this is a black one, and it uh, comes with a 3 amp fuse already installed, which is ideal for this device, which is only 450 watts. So there's the 3 amp fuse inside, and very similar to that other thing we just fitted there. And this will just go under the cord grip at the bottom. Brown over here to where the fuse is. Also marked with L in the bottom there for line. And then the neutral in this case goes over to where the N is there. That will just uh, come across over there like that. And no earth again because, of course, it's a double insulated appliance, so not using the earth terminal in this case. So uh, first of all, we'll just cut this to a sensible length, so it's just slightly longer than the distance to the terminal. Because, of course, when we strip this, there'll be a bit of a shortening of the length, and as before, we'll just double that over to provide a decent amount of stuff in there. And then the neutral will just cut to be a, a longer length. Again, as before, we'll just strip that uh, and fold over. Now, with the cord grip again, we just need to loosen those two screws at the bottom. So, just undo those two. In this case, we can probably just do it so it's loosened. And then just undo the terminals for the line on the neutral. And then we just need to thread the wires through underneath. Now the line is virtually in line, as it were, with that. So we can just thread that in and maneuver that underneath into the terminal, and then we'll just tighten that down just so it holds it in position. And the neutral we need to of course bend around and fit in, and you can usually push these pins up a bit so it's a bit easier to actually get in there and get it lined up with the actual hole. in and we'll just tighten that up just to hold it in position and as before with the flex grip we want to actually just push this in so the in this case orange insulation is actually being gripped by the outer you do not want the wires to extend outside of the plug there so uh, what I'll do is to grip this with some fingers there and the plug and then actually pull the two together so again, you're releasing any sort of tension on that and then on the other side just go in and tighten up those screws to a modest degree and again you're only supposed to be gripping the cable not crushing it flat and totally destroying it so in the case of that one that's perfectly secure it's not going to come flying out so next we'll just arrange those wires in there at the bottom neatly and then we'll just tighten up the two terminals fully and we'll also tighten up the earth here though we're not using it we don't want that screw to be loose because after a while if it was loose it could actually come out and then just fall around and short onto the other terminals and do who knows what so that's it there then so neutral over on the left in the blue brown for the line going to where the fuse is and earth in this case is not used so that would be the green and yellow if it had one now we'll just remove this annoying label from the side of the plug here which is rather disgusting I was going to lose the nice glue there forever, so every time this thing is used, someone's going to stick their fingers on it. And the lid goes over, just a single screw there in the middle to secure that in position. So that is that. So, new plug on the end there in the black, orange flex there coming through to this piece, which I say has the socket part with the holes and the uh, 
plug part here on the end, also going into the piece of equipment over there. So that is pretty much that. And if you wanted to, you can obviously test those on the appliance tester, although bearing in mind this is a class two or double insulated, so there's no earth continuity or anything because it doesn't have it. So all you're testing basically is that there's no shorts between the line and neutral. And in terms of the equipment, that there's no uh, connection between either of those and the metal parts on the outside. But uh, we're not going to be doing that in this particular video. That is essentially complete. So that's how you wire a plug and how you wire a inline connector. And until next time, thanks for watching.